My name is Zuzanna Oswald, and uh, this morning we are going to hear Professor Komorozzi from Budapest. This is the Wurten C. Einsbruch lecture series uh, that he came in the form in which he came. And uh, I would like to say just a few words about Professor Komorozzi. Um, he is professor of Assyrian and Judaic studies at the Budapest University. He also is the director of the Center of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences. And um, he is um, not only, and I put it uh, now this in quotation marks, a, a world renowned, thank you, a world-renowned uh, scholar in his field, but he also has played a very special role in Hungary, um, about which I would be happy to give once a lecture, but I have to restrict myself to maybe two or three minutes. So I am going to be short in telling a fantastic story. And that fantastic story, um, uh, in a way, contains his teaching Hebrew and Hebrewic studies and exegesis and all kinds of um, Jewish and ancient history at the Budapest University, about which you may want to say, so what? You know, there are some people who teach at Budapest University, some who teach at the Sorbonne, some who teach uh, at Oxford, some who teach at uh, UTD. Uh, so what is the great thing about this? The great thing about this is that Jewish studies were uh, not only persecuted during the Holocaust, but after the Holocaust, in the early 50s, um, Stalin and his um, Russian government had a lot against the Jews. Um, thousands of Jews were arrested in the Soviet Union, uh, sent to uh, concentration camps, and killed. There was a anti-Jewish move in the Soviet Union that was taken over by the Hungarian communist government. And uh, after the revolution of 1956, uh, remnants of this have remained there. And uh, the new government after the uh, revolution was keen on not emphasizing the Jewish element in society. And as a matter of fact, to distort as much as one can the memory of the Holocaust. It was during that time and after that time that he was at the university teaching everything that was needed for people to understand uh, and know Hebrew and, 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 can, and read the texts and so on. He also uh, connected all of this with the Academy of Sciences and so at the end, we have a kind of a Jewish education in Budapest that is not only wonderful, but in many ways, I don't know whether or not you know that, uh, Hungary was the only country where um, rabbinical studies went on in the entire Eastern Bloc. So um, I could tell many anecdotes, but here I have to somehow stop. I just want to make one last point that is very important, and that is that besides um, deciding to dedicate his life to Jewish studies, um, Professor Komorozzi has been very much disturbed by the um, distortion um, that the Hungarian government initiated to erase the memory of the Holocaust in Hungary. And his work in this direction is also unique. In his um, essays and newspaper articles, he has written um, immensely much about the importance of not allowing to erase the memory of the Holocaust. Thank you very much, Professor Komorov. Thank you very much, uh, all uh, of you, 
uh, coming this early morning. Uh, uh, I understand my task uh, today uh, as a continuation of the uh, lecture yesterday, but uh, who passed the yesterday evening lecture uh, should not worry because uh, it is an independent chapter in the history of Jews uh, in uh, Hungary. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to thank uh, Professor Oswald for the invitation and for the opportunity uh, to uh, visit Dallas, where I never have been uh, before. Uh, uh, the most important thing uh, I have to emphasize uh, right at the beginning, that Jewish society in Hungary, like in all uh, countries uh, of Eastern Europe, uh, is a post-Holocaust society. It sounds... Uh, 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 unnecessarily uh, to emphasize uh, that because uh, we all know that uh, Holocaust swept uh, all over those uh, countries. But in Hungary uh, about uh, 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 60 to 90,000 Jews survived the Holocaust. Uh, either in the ghetto of uh, Budapest uh, or in the concentration uh, camps uh, from where they returned to the country. And uh, except France, uh, even today, uh, it is the largest uh, Jewish community in the uh, countries uh, touched by uh, the German invasion uh, and Holocaust. Russia or Soviet Union uh, not, uh, uh, doesn't count uh, in uh, this uh, respect. The Holocaust uh, shaped the memory, uh, the psychology, the consciousness of the people uh, living in Hungary. And uh, the Jewish society went uh, over uh, the uh, phases we all know from uh, Europe in the post-Holocaust decades. First, uh, uh, the complex of uh, returning. Returning, whether you find uh, your home, uh, your relatives, uh, 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 your former life, most people didn't. Uh, the second, whether you can find a new place uh, in uh, your life uh, in the country uh, you used to live before the deportation or the ghetto. Uh, third, with the new life, whether uh, do you have to change uh, your attitude you toward the life, uh, your mentality. Uh, at this point, uh, I have to uh, refer to the uh, effect or complex uh, of uh, forgetting. There was about two decades of trying to forget or suppress uh, everything, not to speak about the deportation, uh, not to speak uh, about Jewishness at all, a uh, Hanukkah, uh, you call it menorah, as I heard yesterday. So a uh, Hanukkah lamp was in most families the only symbol of the uh, 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 forgotten or just inherited from the grandma uh, uh, reminder on uh, Jewish identity. Uh, and in the uh, 60s and 70s, uh, 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 
under the influence uh, of the uh, six days war and Yom Kippur war, 1967-1973, uh, uh, Jews started in a hidden, secret form uh, recognize that they can be proud uh, of their uh, origin. So a suppressed uh, identity uh, came uh, up. Uh, it, it was not supported by the society at large, nor by the state. Uh, but it started to develop, bringing along uh, some effects as uh, to the later uh, developments. And in uh, 84, the 40th anniversary of the uh, deportation, the government, uh, for a reason I cannot uh, uh, explain in full, the government uh, issued exit visa for a couple of hundred people to Israel. Those people returned. Uh, that uh, had a tremendous effect on the development of uh, Jewish consciousness in Hungary. Uh, you can imagine uh, who left Hungary after uh, the uh, Holocaust period uh, and went to Israel, were living the uh, very uh, simple, low-level, economically low-level Israeli life. They sent letters to the relatives. Uh, in 84, those relatives, a little older, uh, came back uh, and uh, uh, saw their families, uh, uh, how to say, established uh, fully, intellectually, financially, psychologically uh, in the country. So a joy of Israel started to spread uh, after those uh, few hundred uh, uh, visitors uh, to Israel. And after the changes, uh, there were some uh, other uh, developments I will tell uh, about uh, later. No, that, that is the frame of the uh, post-Holocaust uh, society uh, chronological and developmental level of the post-Holocaust uh, society uh, in uh, Hungary. Uh, one could tell the story uh, either uh, as an historical approach uh, or a descriptive one. What is the situation today? Uh, both of the approaches would take a whole day uh, if one uh, wants to dwell uh, on uh, uh, the most important details. So uh, I try to give you more glimpses or uh, fragments uh, I uh, uh, think uh, uh, are uh, important uh, uh, for uh, the... Uh, 50 or uh, already 60 years uh, since uh, the Holocaust. Uh, the Pest Ghetto was liberated uh, 1945, 18th January. Uh, in the ghetto, uh, about 69 uh, thousand people survived. Uh, this was slightly more than one third uh, who were uh, living in the last months uh, in the Pest uh, Ghetto. Uh, a couple thousand uh, people returned uh, from the camps. 
so our estimation of the survivors of the Holocaust in uh, Hungary goes somewhere uh, uh, around uh, 70 to 90. The most optimistic estimations uh, go up to uh, 120,000. Uh, it is out of uh, about 700,000 uh, Jews uh, in the territory of contemporary Hungary and uh, 925,000 uh, in the territory of uh, wartime uh, Hungary. Uh, you know, uh, after the Vienna uh, uh, agreements, uh, uh, Hungary, uh, there were some territories from uh, Yugoslavia, Romania, and Slovakia uh, uh, joined uh, to Hungary, former territories of the Austro-Hungarian uh, Empire that in Trianon, uh, 1918, were uh, disjoined. Uh, so uh, the Holocaust uh, was uh, uh, touching uh, that we call it historical Hungary, the 925,000 Jews uh, are the Jewish population of that greater Hungary. Uh, seven, uh, about 700 uh, is the Trianon or post-World War II uh, Hungary. It means uh, Ten percent, uh, or slightly less than ten percent uh, of the Jews uh, survived the Holocaust. It is just the numbers, but there was a uh, another uh, consequence of the Holocaust that deeply in the deepest form influenced the Jewish life in Hungary. Uh, you know, in the 19th century, there was a, a, a fight uh, and a clash uh, between the different uh, directions or wings of Judaism. The conservative uh, wing and the orthodoxy were separated completely. Uh, it had a territorial distribution uh, as well. The uh, conservative, or we call it neolog, uh, the neolog Judaism was concentrating in the capital, Budapest, before all in Pest, uh, and in the major cities in the provinces. They were urbanized, uh, modernized uh, uh, Jews uh, living as professionals, medical doctors, lawyers, uh, very little uh, uh, civil uh, servants, very little, it was not allowed. Uh, in part, uh, rich people in the industry on, or enterprises, uh, much less religious uh, you would expect from an Orthodox Jew in 19th uh, century. It is the truth. Uh, anyway, the urban uh, uh, neolog Judaism was concentrating uh, in the big cities. Uh, the Orthodox people uh, used to live in the villages, in the provinces. About two-thirds, uh, our institute published uh, in '84 a huge uh, book, uh, the 1944 census of Jewish communities, uh, ordered by the Germans, uh, but uh, 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 made by the Jewish community. So it more or less uh, reflects the truth. Uh, uh, ab uh, about two-thirds of the Jewish population in Hungary was Orthodox. 
and one third was neolog or uh, as you would call it conservative. Uh, uh, the orthodox uh, uh, communities were but a few one uh, dis, uh, deported, uh, destroyed, killed. The neology survived uh, in past. You know, the urbanized people are more uh, mobile. Uh, they fled before the ghettoization to, uh, to past, uh, or they uh, could uh, uh, hide themselves, or a part of them hide themselves. Some of them even left Hungary uh, before the worst times came. So uh, the modernized people were really more mobile, and the Holocaust destroyed this uh, traditional uh, proportion of two-third orthodoxy, one-third uh, neology. It uh, had a tremendous, uh, in a way, even uh, tragic effect on the Jewish life in Hungary. I don't want to make judgment as to uh, which better, uh, orthodoxy or uh, conservatism, uh, but uh, the landscape in Hungary was shaped uh, by the fight, uh, uh, competition, in part by cooperation of the two major wings. Uh, the Hasidism uh, put only a slight color uh, on that picture. Uh, the uh, uh, landscape was formed uh, by this uneven distribution. And it was completely destroyed. Uh, the conservative or neolog Jewish society uh, 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 tried uh, 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 to go on uh, after the war. I would say it uh, as if nothing uh, has happened. Uh, it means. Uh, uh, with uh, oppressed memories uh, and uh, uh, sufferings, uh, loss, and so on, still uh, to go on with their former life, uh, being a medical doctor uh, or uh, anything else. It brought along... Uh, uh, a much less religious education, uh, more uh, mixed marriages, uh, I mean uh, Christian uh, Jewish uh, uh, marriages, uh, a more or less secular education. There is a, was a Jewish school, uh, even in the worst post-war times in Budapest. The former Jewish uh, gymnasium uh, high school that is famous for decades of uh, raising excellent people. In the early 80s, there were grades where only two or three students uh, attended the Jewish school. Uh, a grade uh, with two or three students. Uh, that was the, the deepest point in uh, the uh, Jewish uh, cooling. Uh, uh, from the time being, we have three different Jewish schools and they are all crowded. Uh, they are uh, three different schools according to the directions, orthodox, uh, conservative, and Hasidic uh, Jewish school. Uh, all of them go from the kindergarten uh, up to the uh, graduation in the high school. So uh, in the recent years, maybe 
five, six years we get at the university, uh, at the admission examination, uh, students, uh, students to be uh, who want to enroll in Jewish studies program, who can read some Hebrew, uh, who know some uh, uh, Judaism uh, in everyday life, uh, synagogue, uh, prayer book, who know something of the history of Israel. Uh, you know, high school are not so good uh, in our uh, times as they used to be earlier. Uh, but still, uh, if one uh, uh, know the Hebrew characters, uh, learns better uh, biblical uh, texts or easier or faster. Uh, to return to the uh, immediate post-war period, uh, the survivors were uh, making uh, different decisions. Uh, lots of them uh, uh, left the country, uh, went uh, to Israel, uh, even uh, in 1945. Uh, uh, until 48, it was more or less a uh, free uh, emigration uh, to Israel. Uh, Bricha, uh, we call it in Hebrew, Bricha. Uh, Bricha. Uh, the Bricha was uh, uh, organized uh, for the uh, easternmost European, Russian, uh, Baltian, Polish, uh, Slovakian uh, Jews uh, to get them to Israel. That was a Zionist uh, movement. The Transit station was Bratislava, Pozsony, uh, Budapest, and Vienna. Uh, the Hungarian government looked at uh, uh, those developments first uh, positively. What shall I do? Nothing. <laughs> Maybe I speak too loud then. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, looked uh, at the movement uh, positively. Uh, they supported it. And then there came the clever uh, uh, Hungarian businessman saying, thousands of Jews are crossing Hungary. Thousands of them uh, go uh, 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 to Vienna, to the Italian ports, uh, to Israel. Why don't we make money on that? So there was an agreement uh, between the Zionist movement that they pay uh, money uh, to the Hungarian National Bank, uh, and the Hungarian National Bank uh, 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 made the supply uh, for the transit uh, trains for the Bricha uh, people. It sounds uh, harmless, but it was not at all. The irony or tragical irony of the Hungarian situation is, first of all, that they charged three, four, five times more because Hungary was bad in bad need of foreign currency. The foreign currency meant dollars. So uh, uh, Hunga uh, hung uh, uh, the Hungarian state made uh, a huge income on the uh, Jewish refugees. And second, after a couple of years, the same people, both in the Zionist organizations and in the government uh, who were uh, involved in organization of those trips were tried. Support of Zionism. Zionism is a uh, capitalistic, imperialistic uh, 
uh, enemical uh, movement, let's go to, to prison. It happened first time in 49, second time in uh, 53, uh, and some of the best uh, former leaders of the ghetto were uh, put in prison uh, for uh, one of them for three and a half years and dozens of them uh, for seven to uh, ten, eleven months. And uh, uh, they were accused uh, for cooperation with the Zionism. Uh, to rebuild the communities, uh, there were some Hungarian organizations uh, to make that. Uh, everything was focusing uh, on the needs of the survivors, uh, of course. Everyone was a survivor, but uh, people were in different needs. Uh, the Hungarian... Uh, is it me? The Hungarian uh, Jewish society was not uh, self-sustaining, self-supporting. It was uh, 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 poor, it was uh, destroyed, and so on. Uh, the major organization who helped uh, in this reconstruction was the joint, the joint. Uh, the joint poured into the Hungarian Jewish life lots of money, millions of dollars. By the way, that was the second uh, major income of the Hungarian uh, government because they took their part uh, of uh, that money too. Uh, but mostly uh, it went uh, on the help uh, and rebuilding, reconstructing of the communities. Uh, we had an official, uh, I mean state-run census uh, in uh, 49, the last one where, where uh, when uh, 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 there was a question after uh, uh, religious identity. And uh, that time it turned out uh, that uh, uh, about 180 communities were reconstructed. Uh, in the 44, 1944 census, there were 740 Jewish communities, two-thirds Orthodox, one-third uh, Neologue. Uh, in that uh, 1949 uh, census, 180 communities, and uh, a couple uh, years later, uh, this number decreased dramatically. Uh, today we have uh, the Pest community with but 100, uh, um, excuse me, but 20 uh, prayer houses and uh, synagogues. Pest is too large a uh, city, uh, and administratively it is one, uh, the same community, but distributed uh, in different uh, uh, prayer, prayer house uh, districts, uh, and about the same number in the provinces. I would say uh, close to 40, 45. Uh, out of the 180 that were existing uh, in 1949. Uh, the Aliyah, the uh, emigration to Israel, as I said, started right after uh, the war with the Briha. The next wave came uh, uh, with the prosecution of the Zionist movement. Hungarian Jews were not uh, very much uh, for the Zionism. That is one of the uh, tragedies uh, in the uh, immediate pre-war period. 
the Zionists uh, could help uh, Polish and Slovakian refugees uh, to get through the border, uh, Hungarians uh, won't cooperate. So, uh, uh, but after the war, uh, Zionism became popular. Uh, they uh, had lots of youth organizations of every, uh, every side, every direction. Uh, uh, newspapers, uh, they uh, had even uh, haksharas, uh, preparation camps for emigration, hakshara in Hebrew, and so on. Uh, uh, they had for a while a Hebrew language school, Tarbut school. Uh, it is an Eastern European uh, development. Tarbut means uh, raising or education, and they uh, taught in Hebrew, uh, all subjects in Hebrew. Uh, in Hungary, it started in the Karpato-Ukrainian Mukachevo Munkács area, and uh, uh, 1939, uh, when Karpato Ukraina was joined to Hungary, uh, they came in waves to Pest. Uh, the Rabbinica Seminary was filled up that time with 200 odd uh, 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 Karpato Ukrainian Jews who spoke, spoke perfect Hebrew. And some of uh, this tradition uh, survived after uh, the Holocaust, uh, and the Tarbut schools were organized in Pest and in uh, northeastern Hungary in Miskolc as well. Uh, uh, raising uh, uh, boys and girls, so uh, 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 together, that is more the Zionists than the uh, uh, Orthodox tradition uh, uh, for the Aliyah, for the emigration uh, to Israel. Uh, you would perhaps know something uh, about the uh, role Jews played in the Communist Party. I have a partisan opinion uh, on this question, so I am not the proper person uh, to uh, explain the situation uh, in full. Let me tell my own uh, opinion on that. The socialist movement from the 19th century uh, was in part led or done by the Jews. Not because they were Jews, but because they were the uh, 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 most progressive in the meaning of uh, social equality and so on uh, people. The Hungarian Communist Party was uh, uh, organized in 1918 uh, by uh, Jews who came back from the Rus Russian uh, captivity. Uh, the leading social democrats uh, were in part uh, 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 of Jewish origin. I repeat, not because they were Jews, but because they were a sort of prog progressive uh, people. At least they were mobile, they were urba uh, urbanized, educated. Uh, they wanted to, uh, to push Hungary uh, on uh, the social progress. Uh, it turned out uh, that after World War II, 
the uh, Moscow emigration who came back to take uh, over the uh, power, the rule in Hungary, where most, most 90% uh, of uh, people from the former uh, communist and uh, socialist movement. In Hungary, they uh, were uh, qualified as Jews. And everyone says that Rákosi and his uh, fellow uh, leaders in the 50s uh, made an oppression by Jews of Hungary, a Jewish oppression uh, of Hungary. Rákosi had nothing to do with the Judaism except his birth. It is not a Jewish uh, man. Uh, for me, for me, and I call that a partisan uh, view, uh, for me the uh, communist leadership uh, in uh, Hungary uh, is as uh, strongly an enemy of the Jewish community as it was an oppressor, a Russian oppressor uh, in Hungary. Uh, and the in part hidden, in part open anti-Semitism in uh, Hungarian society turned against them more as Jews, not more as Russian oppressors. That is a tragic development in the post-war uh, society in Hungary and we have to deal with this, but it is really a difficult thing. Uh, do I have some time more? Okay. But please then ask questions I wanted to speak about anyway. <laughs> uh, the So let me go on for a while and then stop me. <laughs> so I either speak or uh, look at the watch. So tell, tell me. <laughs> uh, uh, you see, I didn't look at my uh, paper sheets <laughs> either, so it is difficult. Uh, 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 the organizational influence of the communist regime uh, was in uh, Hungary that they uh, enforced uh, unification of the Jewish communities. It was done in uh, 1948. You know, uh, the separation of orthodoxy from the conservative and uh, other uh, directions uh, uh, happened uh, in uh, 1869. Uh, it means uh, for 70 years there were three different uh, competitive or fighting with each other uh, uh, organizations, the orthodoxy, the conservatism, uh, and the status quo who did not want to uh, join to uh, any of the separated uh, directions. Status quo disappeared completely after the Holocaust. Uh, and uh, uh, there were always discussion about uh, to uh, make uh, a Jewish uh, unification. It was enforced by the government. It was a 19th century ideal uh, to construct a Jewish church, uh, to have someone to deal with. Uh, Utvers was uh, in the 19th century of the same uh, program uh, and 
Uh, as a matter of fact, I regret to say it this way, Utbush is a, a great uh, uh, hero in the 19th century, positive hero in the 19th century Hungarian society, uh, but, uh, but he did not accept that uh, every Jewish community is separate uh, from uh, uh, each other. In this country, the situation is a little uh, uh, different, but I uh, say usually that in the Roman Catholic Church, you have the hierarchy, uh, the parish uh, priest, uh, uh, and then two more levels than the bishop, than the archbishop and then the pope. A rabbi, a local rabbi in a local community stands, according to the uh, Jewish tradition, on the same level like the pope. Uh, it is exactly the same in Hasidism. In Hasidism, the rabbi talks to God without any pope or uh, or. Vermittler, uh, 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 mediator, mediator. Vermittler uh, is the German Yiddish word for that. Uh, uh, so uh, the uh, uh, unification is nonsense in uh, Judaism, this type of politically. Uh, oriented unification. It was enforced. After the changes in 49, the very first step was uh, the uh, re-separation of the orthodoxy from the conservatism. So no, now we have the two uh, main organizations. Uh, the orthodoxy has uh, uh, communities in three uh, cities, one in uh, Pest and uh, two in the provinces, uh, and the rest uh, is uh, conservative, uh, as I try to explain uh, in the post-war situation. Uh, a most important uh, step, maybe at, uh, with this I uh, uh, finish temporarily to answer your questions, a most important and significant symbolic step was done in uh, after the changes uh, in 1989-90. Uh, right thereafter, in 1991, when uh, both Jewish communities uh, decided uh, to rename themselves Jewish. For 150, 140 years, uh, 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 Jewish was not used uh, in the uh, official uh, language of the communities. They called themselves Israelite uh, or of mosaic faith. Uh, mosaic faith, uh, Moses Hitu in Hungarian. It sounds very strange uh, in Hungarian, but still we have uh, stamps, uh, official stamps. Years ago in uh, New York, in the Jewish Museum, I found uh, a, a stamp of the a past mosaic community, you know, and we have many of them in uh, different cities in uh, uh, Hungary too. Uh, and by this, the word Jewish became slowly but irresistibly a bad word in Hungarian. You know how and why, and you understand without any further uh, explanation. And uh, in 91, the communities decided to call uh, themselves uh, Hungarian uh, Jewish community. Uh, the orthodoxy calls uh, uh, Hungarian uh, autonome, 
orthodox community. Uh, the most interesting spell uh, 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 detail is that uh, orthodox will, uh, will uh, is spelled in Hebrew with uh, tet he, uh, like uh, in English th. In Hebrew, they shouldn't spell it with uh, th, but in Hebrew characters, uh, still they maintain this dated, uh, dated uh, uh, spelling. Uh, it means they wanted really uh, to return uh, to the former uh, 19th century situation. Uh, so, uh, as I told uh, at the beginning, a descriptive uh, story would take a whole uh, day, and uh, I am not so uh, optimistic as it may sound uh, in my lecture. There are lots of trouble uh, and lots of difficulties, uh, uh, anti-Semitism uh, and fight against uh, anti-Semitism. Uh, in 1987, uh, in an underground academic journal, a notion unknown for you in this country, uh, Medvetans in uh, Hungary, you know, uh, I think uh, it is correct to, to uh, name it Underground Academic Journal. Uh, a paper was published by three authors. Uh, all three of them, two of them were psychologists and one of uh, them uh, was a sociologist. The title of the paper sounds uh, like this, How I Discovered That I Am Jewish. Uh, this uh, brought along a uh, intellectual uh, change uh, in the whole academic society in, in uh, Hungary. That liberated the tongues. That liberated the tongues. And uh, uh, since then, we know very well that there are steps back to Judaism, uh, discover the heritage of the uh, grandparents, uh, to ask questions the parents if they are still alive, because they are uh, first great survivors. Uh, and for me, uh, to learn Hebrew, to learn Hebrew, when we started uh, at the university with the Jewish studies department, it turned out immediately we had in the first uh, uh, couple of years uh, up to 30, 40 students in uh, every grade. It is lots for Hungary, really lots uh, for Hungary. Let's say uh, Hungarian uh, major uh, is taken by 150 students at our university. So you can uh, imagine how unproportionate uh, is the interest, uh, was the interest of uh, the Jews for their uh, own uh, heritage. Uh, uh, we realized immediately that they don't want to be Jewish scholars. They don't want to be uh, scholars at all. They don't want to uh, give uh, exams uh, in medieval uh, Jewish history uh, that I uh, taught uh, from Hebrew sources. They are just interested uh, to, uh, to know what uh, Judaism is about. So please ask me questions. And words. When you said the Orthodox movement used the initials uh, Taf and Hay, 
What are the words that go with that tough and hey? Orthodox. No, but I'm saying if you had to, if they're using two letters, I understand that you're saying it's the Orthodox movement, but if they're using a tough and a hey, they're, they're standing for two distinct words, are they not? No, they are, uh, uh, they wanted to spell in Hebrew uh, Orthodox Jewish community, uh, uh, as it is called uh, in Hungarian. And uh, it is spelled uh, Aleph, uh, Resh, Tet, He, Dot. Uh, Aleph, Resh, Tet, He, Dot. Uh, uh, but it is in Hebrew really a uh, strange uh, spelling. It doesn't exist in Hebrew, or only in the name of the uh, orthodoxy. That reflects uh, uh, the strange situation, you know. <laughs> I, I have one more question on a word. When you talked about that movement, about people leaving Hungary, you, you used the word barach or whatever? Bricha. Bricha. In, if I understand, a bricha is a flight, a, a flight out of some place. So it's a flight from what? From the country, from the oppression, from a flight from what? Uh, maybe I forgot to translate uh, bricha uh, into English, but uh, in uh, Europe it is a well-known word. Everybody knows what you said uh, it means fl uh, flight. Okay, flight. It means flight. flight. So uh, uh, we have three different words for the emigration from Eastern Europe to uh, Israel. The most uh, widely used is Aliyah. Uh, Aliyah means going up. Uh, it was uh, uh, at the uh, high festivals uh, when people uh, used to go to Jerusalem to bring their offerings, eat their uh, food, uh, uh, sheep and so on, sheep and so on uh, in Jerusalem and uh, after the days of the festival to return to the uh, home. No, Aliyah is called to call someone, a man in some communities, ladies as well, uh, to the Torah. That is Aliyah, stepping up, going up. The second uh, is Tiyul. Tiyul means Tiyul excursion. Tiyul we call the illegal smuggling of Jews uh, who defected from their country of origin in Eastern Europe. Uh, why uh, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, uh, uh, Italy to Israel during the war, World War II. And the third is Bricha flight, uh, people who were liberated in concentration camps uh, and uh, did not want to remain in their country of former uh, uh, living, uh, they uh, defected, I, I can say, as a synonym uh, for I, that. I would say fled. Fled, they fled. Uh, they fled. Uh, anyway, they uh, fled, they went to Israel. No, you would say only Aliyah. Uh, Tiyul would be a harmless excursion to the woods. Uh, but during the war, Tiyul was a serious business, a dangerous business. Uh, need, uh, uh, needing help uh, of uh, non-Jewish uh, society. Uh, uh, Bricha was uh, an organize, uh, uh, aliyah organized by the Zionist movement and supported by the Joint and the World Federation uh, of Jews and the World Zionist organization. So those three words uh, for going to Israel.